All right, now you can see that we have removed the back glass already. I debated on whether or how to show how to do that because it's kind of a personal thing. I basically cut them out around the outside perimeter, take all that rubber off, and then I'll pop the glass out that way using the inside sections to kind of push against the back of the glass, hopefully not breaking it. These glasses are available, but I don't care for them as much as the original. I like the original glass a little bit better, but if you're in a pinch, you can put the newer piece of glass in here. For 45 years, the Miller family and the dedicated staff at Autocrafters have been here helping you to restore your dream Ford. Thank you for your support. Here's to another 45 years of delivering parts for your Falcon, Fairlane, F100, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and clean this out. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that you can run into in the bottom corners of these sedans and even the fastbacks uh, where weather intrusion is concerned. Well, I found my first problem. Um, the, the driver's side of this car, the channel um, through here is in decent shape. On this side of the car, it is not. We have a rust out hole here. And there's always a, there's a hard sealer that Ford put in these corners. I'm trying to get what's left of that windshield clip exposed. So I'm trying to pick this out of here as much as I can because this is a spot where if any kind of water gets in here, it's going to wreak havoc on this. And this is a hard seam sealer. And I don't know if it was hard back in 1966 when they put this thing together, but it is definitely rock hard right now. There is a space here. This is one of the reasons why I think they put seam sealer down in here was because of that. You wanna check your pinpoints and make sure you've got them all here because that's gonna be important to getting that trim to seat when you go back in for final like that. Down in this corner, we're good. Right here is where the biggest problem can be a lot of times on these cars because as you'll see, there's not, I can't tell if that was originally painted at the factory or not. I should probably be wearing safety glasses doing this stuff because this is kind of wild west right now. Let me see if I can find my safety glasses. There. Safety third. See? Put my safety glasses on, hit myself right in the face. There was a lot of that sealer put into this corner. These, these panels were not exactly done by first shift, I don't think. All right, I'm gonna get the wire wheel after the rest of this off camera. What I'm gonna do here is this hole is the easiest one to repair if I screw it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and brush this off. I'm using a wire brush to clean it down with just a bit. Let's see if I can get to the back side some. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp this in. It's basically a heat sink. Hopefully this will work. And I'm also going to use this for my ground. I will say that this is always kind of tricky because I don't know that that's really 24 gauge steel, but 24 gauge steel is the lightest thing that this MIG will do. So on my MIG welder, which is one of the little pocket MIGs, the handy MIG from the guys at Lincoln, I have turned it all the way down to four and I have the switch settings on low and one. Is that a guarantee that this is going to work? No, it's not. I'm going to do this and then probably come back in and try to uh, 
just grind flat what we need to to make that weather, tri weather strip sit in that channel better. That seems to be working okay. Now the next weld I'm going to do, I'm going to build off the one that's already there, right off the edge of it. Should have started on the bottom of that weld. I think that's going to work for what I want to do here. But it is a big booger weld that I'm going to have to go in and clean up. Still got to get that inside edge of it. The bad problem is you're welding with metal that's pretty rusty. So yeah. It's going to be a problem. I'm going to have to grind that down before I can do any more to it. This one's going to probably pop a little bit because of the fact that it's, uh, it's just wet, rusty metal and it's going to be hard to weld to. wanting to come in from the bottom but it's not wanting to weld in it's sticking but uh, I still got to get that bottom corner taken care of and I'm having to overlap my welds for good contact it's kind of a booger weld and I'm gonna have to go in and clean up now I'm gonna try to work this section up here a little bit there's a spot here that I'm gonna try to weld in and I'm gonna sit hit it with the wire brush I'm gonna go in and use my Dremel tool and try to make a cut across this and see if I can affect this one the way I want to. Not gonna work. Made the top cut, but the bottom cut's problematic. The only other thing I think that might do it is my air saw. Let me, uh, let me go get my air saw. All right, this is a really nice air saw that's a Mac, Matco tool one that Cam bought and is weirdly left here. Uh, this kind of thing can be real handy doing this work. I'm going to probably have to make a couple of cuts here. Whew. That's pretty bad. Lots of rust in there. This is what causes you problems with your welds right there. That level of rust coming through gonna make it tough every time to get a good weld out of it and you've got three pieces of metal here you've got this lower piece here you've got the top piece and you have this rounding piece from the uh, quarter panel coming in on top right here this piece lays in on top of all three of those and I'm gonna brush it out now note that I cut this down below this edge here I'm hoping that that'll make this a little nicer for uh, holding that. All right, I'm going to use my needle nose pliers to try to roll this out of here. When you're doing this, be careful of using grinding wheels that have been contaminated with rubber or whatever. 
from other parts of the car. This can be a real issue with keeping a good clean weld. An older one here that I try to just use for metal work. It's about done in. You have to be real careful too because down in here is where the quarter panel on a lot of these old cars is cut to. So you can see this is a bright silver here. That tells me that's lead. So I'm going to probably stay a little to this side of that area. All right, now I'm going to get some 22 gauge to make my uh, part here out of. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just use this from a straight edge to mark this up. I've already laid a mark in on here. is here. Maybe I can cut it with this. I will probably have to hammer this a little bit. Ain't no probably about it. I'm gonna have to hammer it. I'll do that off camera. I'm gonna take it into the shop here and beat it down a little bit. The biggest worry is we've got lead all the way up in here. I think that's going to present a bit of a problem. We're going to probably have to hit that with some sealer, but I need to go and flatten this stuff out off camera. All right, I've got two small um, locking pliers in place here. I throw my ground in from the back so it's not right out in my way when I'm welding. I've cleaned it up as best I can. Like I said, this is rusty metal, and it's just not, it's hard to get it really clean enough because your problem is mostly on the back side of the metal when you're welding. Uh, I'm gonna leave my settings on a, on a low one on this welder and move up to a five on speed. I think that took that one did. That one did too. All right. Pull that one out. Probably can't see it, but that's popping out through the center of it, and that's because of the dirty metal underneath. Again, not a lot I can do about it because it's actually pulling the rust from the pinch of these two panels. I'm sure there are things I can do about it. If you know what they are, please leave me a comment in the section below. I'd love to hear from all my welders, armchair and otherwise. Now I need to see if I can mess with this gap a little bit on the top. I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'm probably just going to have to flood fill it, so to speak. Now it's just blowing that bottom corner out. It's going to be a nightmare to fix. This really looks bad, but there's not a lot I can do about it. I'm as low as I can get on my settings. 
uh, and I'm trying to just close up that gap that's there on the top. when I'm a grinder, not a welder. I'm not worrying too much about this uh, getting too hot because of where it's at. Great. I'm going to put my hearing protection on because this thing is a screamer. And I'm just going to grind down these welds. Looking pretty good down here. This corner right here is kind of nasty and I've got one spot right here that's popping and I've got this section right here that needs to be done. I'm not going into this. I'm gonna to try to use some of the solder that I've got to see if I can solder that seam up uh, off camera because I'm already gonna take enough heat for the welding I'm doing here and I don't wanna take any more heat for the other stuff, so. blow out. Humidity out here today is really high. I'm getting a lot of fog inside of my lens. I'm hoping that a little bit of spit will at least make it so I can almost see because right now I'm having a real problem with seeing what I'm doing because of the humidity. Pull on the center of it. All right, now we gotta grind again. The little hole came right back. Well, I knew it would though. I think that got all of it. go that's a fast little repair places like down in here where you've got a lump can be a problem if your glass is really close something especially like these little lads down here in the corner I still got to grind these down but these guys if they're sticking up too much can actually impact the back of your glass and cause it to crack whenever you put it in there's a certain lay that these pieces of glass have to have, and if that's sticking up too much, they're not going to be there. The other side is the same repair, so I'm not going to talk about that this week. We're getting this thing done so we can get the glass back in it. 
Um, when we do the glass, I'll be talking about sealers and stuff to go down in these corners to repair or to make this repair lasting and also talk about some stuff that you can put in the back. There's a cavity wax that 3M sells. Once all this stuff is pretty much set in there and ready to go, you want to get hold of some cavity wax to put down inside of here on the back side to keep this thing nice for years to come. All right, so there you go. That's how you do a little repair like this. If I can do this stuff, guys, you can do it too. It just requires a MIG welder like the one I've got back here. I'm gonna turn that thing off so I'm not hearing it all the time. It just requires a MIG welder and some tools. And some of these things you can buy, the only thing that's really not readily available in a nice format like we have is the air saw. You can get air saws at the tool stores, they're available. But, be that as it may, you guys do me a favor, be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week and we'll see you on down the road. That actually went much faster than I thought it would. I'm a little afraid of it. Never mind, doesn't matter at all. Moving on to the other side, off camera. Sorry, you're not gonna be able to see it, but I wanna be able to move fast and cheap. Well, fast anyway. <laughs>